Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to everybody around the world. Welcome back to the One Piece video featuring your boy, King. Get ready for a very, very spicy deck profile featuring OPO8 here on the channel. Let alone, this will not be the first nor the last variation of King that you see from me. King has become my Yamato in OPO8. This deck can be built in numerous different ways and can be competitive and is competitive in the right hands with a good pilot. I think King hasn't showcased himself enough yet in these bigger events just because I think it is a skill issue when it comes to playing this leader. Purple and black has some very, very strong combinations together, and I think it's going to take the right person to crack it in a big event. Which, you know, by all means, if Bandai decided to open up regionals to a lot more people instead of locking it at a certain cap and or tickets selling out straight away, I think a lot of other a lot more people will be interested in going to these bigger events and trying more decks. But you know, it eats their own. It is what it is. People want to play certain leaders that have statistics or winning vice versa and they want to look over every other deck out there that isn't quote unquote meta and I think King does have a chance in this current meta game and without further ado we're going to dive into a list here which I very much enjoy but again this is not going to be the last iteration that you see from me here on the channel I already have another build that I'm going to showcase to you guys later on but of course we have to dive into another build after this one which is Carrot. Now, a lot of people very much enjoy Black Maria here, and they think this card is very suited for King. And I'm not going to tell you you're wrong, but I'm not going to tell you you're correct. Black Maria has her, her moments in King where she can be utilized, and it does make sense, but often not, you are not going to build a list around King to utilize Black Maria to the fullest. So for me personally, I have tried it out, and numerous different variations of King. And this is not my favorite card to use in here. I don't like making a build around this card to try to utilize her because this is not going to be the focal point of King builds. But unlike Purple Kaido, where Black Maria really, really shines in decks like Reiju, where she can shine as well, King is a little bit different. You might see the leader ability and see that you minus two Dawn. All right, cool. Well, you can get that Dawn back with something like Pudding, Something like Eustace Kid, you know, the five cost kid, of course, we all know what that is. You might be able to get it back with that, or Onigashima. The minus two is pretty negligible to have to use Black Maria to get that Dawn back. You want to use her in tandem with cards like Kaido. And we're talking the ten cost Kaido, the OG from set one, where you minus six Dawn, you kill every other character on board, you KO them. And or the brand new Kaido and Linlin that we got from OP08 can make very good use out of Black Maria, along with the 9 cost Kaido. There might be some other cards I am forgetting, but these are going to be the top three that make the most sense to use Black Maria with. Now, again, these are going to be top in. And if you're slotting in these top in cards, you're going to hurt yourself on your other top in that is going to be involved to use with this deck. And with that being said, a lot of lists also like to try to utilize things like Kuzan and Isho, which have the cost reduction, also allowing King to use more abilities to pop cards on board, such as things like with Jack, with Ice Ages, cards of that nature. So if you're going to be diving into Black Maria to try to utilize her effect, I think you're going to hurt your top in in doing so. So I am going to try playing around with her a little bit here with Kaido. I very much enjoy this Kaido. I think Kaido does make a home in King, but I don't need Black Maria to make this card function at its fullest. Now, when it comes to the rest of this build here, there's a lot of different combinations that King can come up with and utilize to get off a lot of board control, board pressure, and going wide with this board. Now, you may have noticed we are not running the um, one drop queen, which is okay, right? The one drop queen is not gonna be in this particular build due to the fact that I'm going to be utilizing the uh, the search engine of the new OPO7 card event that we've gotten that allows you to search out Big Mom Pirates and Beast Pirates, whereas the Queen only searches out Animal Kingdom, but he cannot search himself. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword here. You you drop any Linlins that you see inside the search, they go back to the bottom of the deck. You drop any five-cost Queens, back to the bottom of the deck. 
and you're really only looking for your Animal Kingdom, which would be your Jack, your Kaido, or your Onigashima, or whatever 2Ks that you're utilizing out of the Animal Kingdom, such as Black Maria here, which this search in this particular build becomes kind of lackluster. So we're going to go with this just so you can search out everything here that you actually need in the late game. When it comes to your, um, your searcher, you're getting your Onigashima Island, and you're getting your Linlins. Now the Kuzan, of course, you may see these here and there, you may have to bottom deck a couple of these, but if you can mulligan into this, you can draw into this early with your leader ability and or with Sabo plays with Queen, you're chilling in most, my, in most game states. Now, like I said, there's going to be times where you will whiff with Queen or with Searcher here and bottom deck this, but this is going to be a very, very key piece to most of your matches going forward for what this card allows you to do. And it's the same concept with Isho. If you're playing with the 8 cost, just be mindful. You have to work a lot harder with Isho to pop 10 costs consistently on board. Whereas Kuzan, that big min at minus 5, is huge. In any case, you may see other cards here that you don't normally see in King, which are going to be Sabo and Rebecca. And yes, this is correct. This is what you see for Rebecca to Sabo. You may be arguing the fact that it's weird to play Rebecca without Gecko Moria. Sure, you can say that when you come from a mindset of Gecko Moria and Rob Lucci build sets. In King, you're utilizing Rebecca strictly to get back your Jack and your Sabo. Nothing else. And this is because these are going to be your ideal pickups for this deck. Now, in the late game with the Rebecca, you're always going to draw into this. You can actually split this the other way if you want to. You can go four of these and two of those. That's perfectly fine. The Rebecca, you're never, ever, ever going to throw out, a, out of hand for a 1k counter. So that is a downside. But she does allow you to always have the option of getting Sabo back. So you can pitch this for a 1k and get it back in the late game to get Sabo on board. Or with the Jack. This is a very, very strong card to play into the Luchi matchup. And as a Luchi player into the mirror, it's generally speaking on 7 Dawn. You're dropping, you're dropping Jack, which makes it very difficult for black decks to remove. They have to spend a lot of removal to get rid of Jack unless they're swinging over it heavily. So being able to get Jack back from the trash or use him as a pseudo blocker is really, really strong here. Now, I also tried utilizing Pudding in this build, and I tried playing with Pudding in my first iteration of King that I put on the channel here, Pudding with um, the 5 cost kit. I, I really want to think that this card belongs in King. I really do. I like it. I think Kid's also really good here. But I think they're too slow to utilize this deck to the full potential. Because on 3 Dawn, you're generally playing Onigashima Island anyway. And you know, you're swinging for 6 and, and passing turn. Or you don't draw this and you have this. And then this gets rested by like Carrot's ability, any mink card, Bonnie. You know, it just gets popped. And it's not something that I can rely on safely, but there are certain decks where you can play this down and your opponent can't deal with it because they don't have the removal. So decks like Kagero, which does work, but again, it's very, very slow due to the fact how fast that man gets a lot of bodies on board. You can play this into a Nell and they can't have a way around this unless they get a Nami trigger or either, either or Nami trigger or have to hard play the five cost Nami to pop it. They're not going to Rigo this. They're not going to Kingdom Come this. So at the end of the day, I think this is a really, really good card in certain matchups. And it does allow you to use your leader ability freely in the late game. But overall, this is one of my mini build setups here for King. I want to try to showcase this the best of my abilities into whatever we get down to play today. Let's go ahead and get into it. I'll see you guys in a split second. Now, before we dive into today's games, I, I do want to touch back on this real fast before we, you know, we take it away. If you have Helmeppo and Trash, okay, Kamazo on board, all right, are you following? You play down a Gecko Moria, you get back the Rebecca, you get back the Helmeppo. Helmeppo does the minus three to something. Awesome, right? This is already on board. You can either play down a Brook if you want to. And if you do play Brook off of Rebecca's leader ability, or sorry, Rebecca's skill, you give something a minus one. So that is now minus four. You can activate your leader ability to minus two Dawn, give something minus two. 
So that would be you're killing anything at six costs and less, which is great, right? If you don't want to play Brook off the Rebecca, you can play down the Suru. That way you're killing anything from seven costs and under. Great. This, this build setup with Gecko requires a lot more setup to pop things on board. This isn't Rob Lucci, where you can drop Rob Lucci for the four costs and get a lot more characters under your control, right? To be fair. This one requires a lot more going on to utilize Gecko Moria to his fullest. Now, there are going to be build setups out there that can utilize the King with Rebecca and Moria, but it's going to be a lot slower than you're used to. Again, this is not a Rob Lucci. This is not a Gecko Moria build where you can draw into this off your abilities or get this back out of trash with other cards like um, Hogback and stuff. I think King has a harder time utilizing Gecko Moria to his fullest than other lists, but he doesn't have a difficult time using Rebecca. Now, I've talked to a lot of King players out there. I've seen a lot of threads on Reddit. I've seen a lot of content when it comes to King. I've been asked numerous different questions about multiple different builds when it comes to him as well. You guys may be focused on the fact that King is a ramp deck, quote unquote, with Onigashima Island. You can utilize it. It's very good for this deck and I highly advise you to be using it. But there are some lists out there that don't run the card and they go heavily into the 2K counter route. So in this one in particular, you can run 18 2Ks, you can run 16 2Ks, you can go 20 plus if you want to. Your, your goal is to just survive into the late game, right? Ideally, sounds awesome. But with decks out there like Calgara, with Pudding, with Zoro, you may not run into it this week at Locals. You may run into it next week, the next week after that. Aggro decks are going to be trouble for this leader without having any form of board presence. And if you don't have Onigashima Island to ramp into the late game, or any sort of ramp whatsoever to get to the late game to survive for Moria, to survive for Sabo, you're going to have a hard time. Because we all know that Gecko Moria, unless this is coming from Rob Lucci, is not very strong on 8 Dawn Curve. Let's be fair. Because we're not getting back Rebecca uh, with Spandam Combo, with Helmeppo, you know what I mean, into the Lucci. In this list, you don't get a lot of value out of it. But you can pull cards back, like I mentioned before, if you have the 4-drop um, Kamazo on board, you can get things back like Helmeppo, the Rebecca, into a Brook or a Suru to get a pop, to get a pop with this. Certainly. And if not, you could potentially have Jack on board and then go into that play with Gecko Moria. That's something you also can do. Now, I like running the Sabo in King in King variations. I think Sabo is a much better card here, opposed of trying to go a route of Gecko Moria. Sabo has more utility with him, and he does stop wide boards when you don't have enough removal to do so. So hypothetically speaking, if you're at Tendon, you have the option to drop a Suru and an Ice Age, okay? Then with your leader ability, you can also minus two Dawn, so minus two cost something else on board. You play down a Sabo, you're killing a 10 cost and a seven with the reduction, which is really, really nice. But overall, we're gonna dive into a bunch of games today. This might be a longer video than usual, so I'm sorry. I'm gonna try my best. Let's get at it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We're gonna dive into a bunch of games today. Come at you guys with King playing into Jewelry Bonnie here, who I hopefully is not AFK. Now, we're gonna try two different variations of King today. Um, we're gonna play with the list I showed you, and then we're gonna swap it up a little bit and add in the, what's the card called? It's the three cost event that has like Big Mom on it, like where she's eating cake. We're going to utilize two of those events here in the list as well. But I might swap it uh, after this match, maybe. And when we do, we're going to go down one pudding from three to two to utilize one cake. And then we'll go down one ice age to utilize the other cake. In any case, you may have noticed that Bonnie is everywhere at your local scene, you know, still is, still has been, still a very, very strong deck. Um, thus far, it doesn't really matter what iteration of King I'm playing. I don't necessarily feel that King has a hard time in this matchup. We're just gonna go nine to face here. Because we don't have anything to play. Um, 
And I think that's more so our top end is just, it's very, very gross. And we can remove everything that she decides to put on board, including uh, Basil Hawkins without an issue. And how might that be, you might ask? Well, with cards like Reduction and Jack, you really just don't have to do all too much, to be fair. You play down an Ice Age, you rest your Jack, you pop the Hawkins and you call it a day. He can't rest Jack because Jack rests himself in that exchange. So you get rid of the Hawkins and it's just that simple. I feel like Jack in this matchup though is going to be your saving grace most of the time. But if Bonnie can, can permanently rest it with things like chaining into Dolphamingo back to back to back to back, it does make Jack more of a liability, right? Because he can't use his ability if he is rested, and a good Bonnie player is going to try to capitalize on that as much as possible. But cards like Carrot can't be played on board to keep Jack rested due to the fact that he's at 11 cost. So that's something we can also take advantage of here in this matchup. Along with, um, we have one in hand currently, uh, Kamazo. I keep, I think, I've, I think I'm butchering that name every time I say it, but. You know how when you swing in with, when I swing in with my Linlin next turn, right? She's going to rest my leader. Makes sense. We have Kamazo in hands in which, sweet, we actually do another one, in which now we can pop the board. So we attack nine, she'll rest lead. Awesome. We can either play another Linlin here, drop Kuzan, and be chilling. Actually, let's let's do this. Let's just play both of these down. That's a minus the Don, right? Let's give Uroj minus two. We could draw one, but let's give him minus two. And then we'll pop this, and then we'll pop the other Bonnie. We have two Don open, we can't do anything with, we'll pass turn over. Now, in that exchange. Kamazo doesn't have to be rested to activate his ability whatsoever. It's only when you minus Dawn, you kill something on board. So now you guys have control over the, um, like the searchers, you know? Instead of having to attack into the searcher or play some sort of event to pop them, now all you have to do is use your leader ability. And then we just remove the searchers without, without fear of Bonnie having to rest one of our other characters as we try to clear the searchers out. She's got like 13 cards in hand, too. That's crazy. Get Rebecca off that hit as well. I do want to get down um, Kuzan. Oh, there's the Basil Hawkins. Hmm. How do we get rid of this? Subaru won't be able to won't be able to do it here. I think we can. Okay, yeah, we got it, we got it. We go 9, and we go 5, 5, 5 with everything else. Yeah, she's going to rest stuff. That's fine. Mm-hmm. And then we'll use our leader ability just to uh, pop it with Kamazo. Because now we can kill Bonnie and Basil Hawkins in a turn. Which is amazing. And the cool thing about playing into these green matchups, unless you're playing into Carrot, where she can just keep everything rested or keep certain cards rested with her leader ability, or the um, Electrical Luna and stuff, I know Bonnie can utilize that as well. It's just a lot harder for Bonnie to deal with these cards without keeping them rested or attacking into them heavily. She can go 5 here, she's going to drop Dofi, obviously. Yep, this should be Lin Lin, Kuzan, and... Okay, alright, that's fine. He's a 5. Guess you can play down Queen, do Kamazo's ability. Oh, never mind. I made a mis misplay here. Because I can't pop him, he's only a 5 cost. I think we should have played down the uh, Suru. We should have played the Suru here. And got the cost reduction, and then we could have popped him. That's my bad. But that's okay though, that's fine. This is why we practice. She has two cards left in life here. We're sitting on seven in hands. 
Or she's sitting on seven in hand. I think we can go aggressive and not have to worry about it. Because if I had to guess, she'll attack into the, um, the Kuzan next turn. Which is okay. She needs to remove that off board, because he enables me to do everything here. Yep, cool. I'll pass it over. Because we know if she slaps down anything else, that's not going to be a blocker here or some form of resting unit. We just win next turn. Because she doesn't have enough blockers for me to not be able to remove them. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Alright, so Dofi comes down. So we could go 10-10. But that might be a little risky here if we go 10-10. I think we have to clear board. If I decide to go 10-10 and she does have the counter, and she plays down like a Hody Jones to go through life here, we lose. Because we don't have enough counter in hand to protect ourselves in this scenario. So, let's remove both these bodies on board. That's a 7. Okay, so Kamazo can pop that Doflamingo. We can minus 2 costs in the other Dofi and have Jack use that. Right? Is that math? I think that's math. Boom, boom. Minus 2 here. We'll pop this one. And I can't use that, so we'll have to do Jack. I mean, we don't really need the Ice Age anymore, right? With, with uh, Kuzan on board. So. Taking it slow. Just in case. Actually, you know, I probably should have attacked with him. Oh, nope. We're chilling. That's pretty good, boys. It's pretty good. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We're going to dive into another matchup here. Coming at you guys with King playing into Black Yellow Luffy. Everybody's favorite deck in the format. I mean, since he's come out, this deck has been a menace. And uh, unfortunately, if I can't beat it, I don't know if this deck is good enough, if, if that's the case, you know? I feel like Black Yellow Luffy has to be... You have to be able to surpass it or have a good matchup into it or be able to beat it. To call your deck good or to be any form of meta defining i don't know that's just how i look at it almost like he gatekeeps a little bit but not so much i think y'all understand what i'm saying anyway with the double pudding we can use our leader ability for free especially considering he can't remove the puddings here which is really really good now i guess he could he could have um the the egghead luffy but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Sure, let's use this. Oh, that's not bad. Hmm. I think it's better to take the Kaido here. Because I'm not looking to do any form of damage to him. I want him to use his own 2k counters. Sorry, guys. I apologize. I want him to use his only 2k counters to just remove life himself. And if we're just going to try to stabilize and get big bodies on board. I don't think Kuzan here is a huge threat, but if I can remove it and I have the means to with Jack, we might as well just do it. We could actually just ramp up and then play the Big Mom to take the ramp back or take the Dom back to put the Kuzan in life, which is probably the better bet. This allows us to stabilize and have Big Moms on board for the inevitable. I'll we'll put this on bottom. We get the Dom back with the pudding, which is awesome. Now you only can you have to do them both at the at the same time and it's once per turn. So you don't get to pick and choose. It's kinda like Sugar's ability, which once it happens, it happens, you know. We get Kamazo from that, which is pretty good. He'll do really well in this matchup here too, if we can put down the 10 cost Kuzon. Which I've also noticed some Luffy builds run it as well. So they'll do things like the 4-cost Kuzan, and then they'll Finger Pistol you, or they'll drop the 10-cost Kuzan, then Finger Pistol you. The same thing with Ice Age, so they do have a little bit of removal, it's just not, this isn't Rob Lucci or Gecko Moria. We can get Jack here on board, which he'll be a problem for this deck going.
going forward, I think. We can minus two, and we can pop the Luffy, or the Kuzan here. It's probably better to get rid of the Luffy, just because this enables him to start trashing his life. Which is not something we want to do. Ooh, nice, not bad. But we don't need the Queen as much. We'll get rid of the Queen. Hmm, I don't want to attack him at all. Which leads Luffy to have to play the five cost Luffy back on the board or play um, like Makino and Flampe, the rip life. Oof. Man, I don't want to give that away. The queen, I don't necessarily mind too much, but considering we have four Rebecca's, it, it might be okay to do it like this. Give this as well. Normally I wouldn't mind taking the hits here. But we didn't have another Lin Lin. And speaking of Kuzan. I mean, we can get rid of him though. We can pop the Ice Age on this. We can drop Kaido down. We have both puddings on board. Let's get back two Don. We have Don from the Unigashima Island as well. So Kaido costed three here in this scenario. We're doing that. Ramp up. Run this in the Kuzan. Nice. Jack, I mean, he allows me to draw a card, which is pretty good. Mm, yeah, I guess so. Let's draw one. Let's do the thing. We can pop the Garp. Ice Ages. Kill that. And you can go. Okay, Hiyori. So this means he's probably stacking a uh, big body up there. Yup, here it comes. So he takes the life, leader, the skill ability, yup. Goes down to two. Our board is starting to look pretty good. We got a bunch of big bodies right now. Unfortunately, we lost one due to Kuzan, but I think we can get back there. Let's ramp up. We're at six, we go to seven, then we'll be at nine next turn. There's the first Sabo. So that does suck to see. Hey, that was perfect. Let's go. Hmm. He's going to use Luffy next turn, right? To rip the life. And potentially play down a Flampe. Which would suck. Because he'd be at zero at that point. We may have to put the Luffy in life. Which arguably that's still really good for him. Due to the fact that he can play it on a baby Luffy and get it back. But if we put it at bottom. Hmm. Let's put this on bottom of life. He still has to go through... You know, three more life to actually get to his leader ability, so he might be fine. Get a Kuzan. So next turn's looking pretty good for us. We got three big bodies on board. So as long as he doesn't have a um, another Sabo, we should be fine. I mean, that's not bad, but we don't need the extra Dawn right now. We go to 10 next turn anyway. Okay. Alright. Takes Garp instead. Interesting. Gets a Sabo. Oh, PO4 Sabo. Okay, so he does have another blocker for the next turn. 7 lead. I can't go down the 1 life right now. As much as I wouldn't mind, I don't have another Lin, Lin at this moment to sustain, so. Let's go back up to 10 here. In this situation, we have means to pop Gecko and Kuzan in one turn. We don't necessarily need the Ice Age, but it saves us here. We can play down Kamazo to pop multiple things as well. We'll get rid of the Pudding. Okay. Hmm. 
No, this makes sense. This makes sense. Because we can minus two, right? We can put this on the Kuzan. We have Pudding to get our Don back. Okay. This will pop the Kuzan. Jack can pop the uh, Gekko Moria. That's not bad. Um, oof. We need the Kuzan, though, at some point. Let's run this into Garp. And then run the Kaido into the Luffy. Just in case he has the counter in hand. And if he does, we'll just stack up on them and then go for it. Cool. Never mind. We're chilling. I already did leader ability. It's my bad. Okay. Um. Is it worth it? What does he get here? No trigger. So now he can't rip both of these from life with any of his abilities other than things like Makino, Hiyori, and um, what's the other one? Um, am I missing something? A Flampe. So, we'll see. Unless he plays out another 5 cost Luffy and does it that way. He does have a ridiculous amount of cards in hand. That is the third Kuzan we've seen. Or the fourth Kuzan we've seen. There's six. We'll counter out. Five left for Sabo. Yep. Mm -hmm. Two events. So that's two dead cards in hand that had no counter. There's Maria. We won't be able to pop anything here, which is unfortunate. So I'm not going to play Kuzan down right now. We'll get one Dawn back. We can't pop anything, which is very, very unfortunate. I think it's better just to pass turn here. Because he would probably take the hits from Linlin -Lin and uh, Kaido. If I had to guess. And then block out the other two. Or Jack and Kamazo. Or, you know, Jack Leader or whatever. Okay, minus four to Kaido. We get a Jack. What just happened? Okay, finger pistol. Alright. I should have saw that coming at some point. But, kills this as well. It's pretty good, man. It's pretty good. But I don't know if that's enough for him here. Let's do the thing. We'll pop this. Go five here. That was smart, just letting it go. That was pretty good. I'll draw a card. There's no reason to go negative two here. Nice, another Kuzan. We'll get rid of the Kuzan. We don't need him. And, uh, pass turn. It's looking pretty good right now. It is, it's looking pretty good. But it does only take him... Again, one Makino, one Hiyori... I imagine he's drawn into it at some point, especially with a hand size like that, but maybe he hasn't. If he had those 2Ks in hand, right, he would probably already use them just to go to zero and start his shenanigans. So that leads me to believe he doesn't have a lot of 2K counters in hand, or he has no way to do that. Um, okay. Not bad. Seven K. We can get we can get back to Sabo with Rebecca next turn, which is fine. We're also about to clear this whole board. I guess we can start clearing the guard first. Um, Kuzan will pop the Gecko Moria for us here, which is something we have to do. That way, he can't he can't get that back. Hmm. Let's do this first then. Get the Sabo. We're gonna have to replace the pudding. Which is unfortunate. She's done so much work for us up until this point. But we need Sabo on board. Just in case we can have two blockers and take it safe. No Kamazo. Which does suck. Yeah man, Rebecca's pretty good here. 
I think a lot of people just don't pay attention to her or don't even try to utilize her in King, but um, she does work. Go 5 here. Yeah, this is a different build. Obviously, you can't hear me. I, I always do this. I don't know why. Um, We'll use the Jack to get rid of the Gecko Moria here. I think that's just the best way to do it. He can't pop anything next turn here with Kuzan anyway, so... I don't know why I decided to do that, actually. We can actually draw a card. Yeah. Math is hard sometimes. Ooh, we'll get rid of the Ice Age. Pop this. And then we'll pass turn here. Just in case he has the counter for the 9 and the 10. Or he decides to take both hits. Mm-hmm. Let's try it. Which probably was a mistake here, but we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. He didn't have any way to do that. And if you look, he had 14 cards in the deck. So, we might be able to get him the deck out. Because in this situation, he'll need blockers on board so he doesn't die, right? Because he can't attack me this turn, other than uh, with Kuzan and Luffy here. If he doesn't get Sabos, then he loses the following turn. Now the Sabos will draw him, you know, cards, right? Obviously. He's got 14 in deck, so he should deck himself out here soon. We have another Linlin in hand to sustain ourselves again for next turn. There is Moria, sure. Mm hmm. Sleep. Okay. Sharasha Sabo and another Sabo for that. Interesting. Levin here. We cannot let him have this, which does suck, but we get rid of the Sabo. You may argue we can get rid of the Rebecca. Yeah, that's true. But to be able to play Sabo again next turn, if we want to, is probably better in this scenario. He's going to be a 9k body. Hmm. So he drew three cards that turn. So he's got 11 left. So we'll go to 10 when he draws for leader. Or sorry, when he draws for his turn. And I cannot KO either one of these. Let's search. Hmm. I guess taking the 2k counter is a better idea here. Now we can play Lin, Lin down. And then put the Sabo on life. This might just play into our favor. We can get rid of the queen. Put this up here. I don't know why I said Sabo. And then, uh, we just pass turn. After we draw here. Nice. Okay. Pretty solid hands. We're doing pretty good here. He's got nine cards left. And if he doesn't kill us this turn, he loses the next turn. Pulling down blockers here makes him draw uh, draw out. Which is something that we want him to do, but... Hmm. That's two Sabos in trash. One Sabo on board. There's the Flampe. Interesting. The leader ability is active again. He did put the one card back in the deck, so... But he also drew one, right? So he would be still at 8. Double Sabo. Off leader skill. Sure. You have means of doing... Oh, he does. Okay. That's one. Nine cards left. Yep. Okay. Do you have another? Garp. Draws into a Sabo. I mean... I'm not mad. Because now all we have to do is literally survive a turn, right? That's pretty much it. That's 13. I mean, sure, you got it. We go to 10. That's one Sabo.
we'll still have enough dawn. Okay, so we can do this. We can take a 2k counter here. Kaido's not really going to help out, so. Hmm. He's at 9. Let's get cards out of hand. Let's see what he's got going on here. I'm hoping he allows the Sabos to get KO'd, but he'll probably try to guard out from hand first. There's Luffy. Mm hmm. He's got two Sabos in trash again. Okay, three Sabos in trash. Let's play down our own Sabo and Rebecca. I do want to keep Jack on board. We get rid of the Kuzan. And then the Search. We can minus two Dawn here. The leader ability to draw one. Nice. Our hand's looking pretty good. And this should be the last turn. Because if he does leader skill and puts another Sabo back on top of life, this should be game. Three. Wait, wait, hold up. One, two. Two Rebecca's. Um, where's the other one at? Okay, so we've seen all Rebecca's. Yeah, this is the final turn. Uh, good game, buddy. Mm hmm. Uh oh. He can only attack me with one Sabo in leader here. And considering we have two blockers up, we are fine. Get rid of this. And good game. I mean, this was fun. I, as, as stressful as it was, it was still fun. There's no real point of him guarding out. Because regardless if he decides to do that and play leader skill again with Sabos, he just loses. But I don't think he has any more babies anyway, so. Play down one more blocker. We'll toss this away. And do our leader skill again. We'll minus two here. Good game, buddy. Well played. Oh, he did have one more baby. Huh. <laughs> that was pretty good, man. It was pretty good. Nah, there's no wait. He played. He played really, really well. Who'd have thought King can just wall this deck, man? That's pretty crazy. Uh, how many times did he sabo this game? Seven, six, somewhere around there. I think it was good. It was definitely a good game. But I don't believe this turn, even if he had one more card left in the deck, he could kill me. We just block the the two high, uh, biggest hitters, and then with all the counter in hand, I, I think we were chilling. We could have swung back next turn and potentially won the game. Because he has 2, 4, 6, 8k counter in hand. But, it's nice. Overall, let's dive into another one. Not bad, not bad. I don't know if you if you guys stuck with me for that whole game. But we played a Luffy one earlier. It was like a 30 minute game. That was probably the longest game I've ever done here on Sim. Maybe. If I can recall. At least like recording it and then and then doing it. You know what I mean? I'm going to try to chop it down with editing a little bit. Because I think that was a really, really long game. But uh, overall, we're diving to another one. Playing against Doflamingo here as King. Which is one of the big bads in the format. So let's see how we do. And I don't think it should be that difficult, just because with the amount of removal that we have, he has to see Red Rock when we see Kuzan. And if he doesn't, that's a, it's a tough one for you, buddy. It really is. Nice. Okay, so we have Curve for Jack, which is really good. Jack, on the following turn, we can start popping um, Edward Weevils. Yep, I'll take that. 
I'm going to try to play for board control this whole entire game, if possible. Seven. That's fine. Ooh, a ramp up. Or, or, hold on, wait, wait, wait. So we go to eight next turn. That'll put us to nine. Onigashima will put us for ten. I think I want to have Jack on board, though. I think having Jack on board is just the, the better out, outlet. So let's ramp. As much as I wanted to save it and not do it. Considering the following turn will still be on 10 Dawn. And if I don't play Jack here, we'll kind of hurt ourselves. Yeah, exactly. With all these bodies, so... No six. Man, we get another one. Let's go. That is 10 Dawn, boys and girls. That's crazy. That was super lucky. Hmm. It might be worth it just to play Jack, though. Let's go five here. Mm hmm. We'll go six. Just get cards from hand. Yep. And then Queen will become like a liability as a pseudo blocker, I'd, I'd imagine. But I could be wrong. Yeah, let's do Kuzan. We'll pop this. Do leader skill. I mean, I'm not mad. We saw the Kuzan. Just in case he does have Red Rock here. If he doesn't have Red Rock, I imagine he was he was digging for it with the Perona. Gekko Moria comes off that. Seven lead. We have no choice but to give him the zero cost event. And he goes seven with both of these. And we don't have a lot of ways out of it. So... Ooh. We're still we're still in here, boys. We're still in here. Go five here. He let that go, so that tells me he doesn't have any counter power. Like there's no way, right? That's my bad. Math is hard. I should have uh donned up king or sorry, queen and went seven and then played Big Mom. But that should have been the play there. I don't want to play Rebecca. Just in case he has, um, what do you call it, a uh, gravity blade to just remove our bottom neck both of the blockers. And then he can go 7 and 6, I guess. This way, we can get rid of the Kuzan, gain the life, we can put the Jinbei on bottom, and then slow play this for the rest of the game. Because now if he doesn't draw into Red Rock, we're chilling. Okay, another 2k counter. I think seeing the other Kuzan kind of hurt as well, just because it's a dead card, but 10k and the queen, interesting. Why wouldn't he just go... Oh, okay. I still find that weird he didn't just go like heavily into Kuzan, but I'll take it. That's fine. Go five here. Jack can kill the crocodile. And now we shouldn't have to worry about any rush units here, so we should be chilling. Ooh, the Linlin though. We'll get rid of the queen. Linlin allows us to sustain ourselves. Let's run this in here. I don't want to give him cards just yet. Okay, cool. Not bad. Hmm. Nah, we're not going to attack. Again, the rest of the back, pass it over. Just in case he decides to just, again, stack Dawn and go for it. We don't have enough in the hand to counter out. I think he's going to clear Jack here. You got it. Now remember, we have the Rebecca. Rebecca can bring back the Jack for us, which is a really, really good thing. But we need to make sure we're healthy. 
get rid of the Ice Age, heal life, put this on bottom. Delphi's got quite a bit of life now, which is unfortunate. Let's go 6 lead. We'll go 9 lead. We can have some cards. We'll draw again. Another Ice Age. Okay. Where's the Red Rock at? There it is. Well played. And that's why I didn't really want to like be super aggressive until my board was, was set. And in this situation, we've gotten two Linlins on board here. Yo, all the Ice Ages. Can we stop? Goodness. Give this minus two and pop it. This allows us to do at least three damage. Maybe. Okay. Well, there he goes. Cool. Thank you. Hmm. Let's take Jack. Because we have three Ice Ages here in hand, we can pop anything he decides to put on board. Just be mindful that our hand is completely dead now, so... He's gonna try to clear that, I'm assuming. Just nine. That sucks, because we have no counter in hand. Second Red Rock. Goodness. I mean... We'll get rid of the Ice Age here. We'll go 6 and then 9k. Let's ramp up. Leader skill. We'll pass turn here. Let's go 9 the face. And now at this point, I don't think there's anything he can do to stabilize. Like, absolutely nothing. There's Moria. I guess he could have red rocked again and then it went 9k into Linlin, -Lin, I suppose. And that would have cleared board. We gotta take it. There's Rebecca. And Kaido. Um, I believe this should be game. But we could also take it a little bit slow here. Nah, we probably should just win game. We, we should have just dropped the Kaido and just went for it. This is still cool too though, right? We give this minus two, then Jack will pop it. Yeah, this is still cool too, it's fine. We get rid of the Jack. And now we go seven. Seven, thank you game. Okay, so that's 1k counter. Let's go nine. There's a 2k counter. Now we have to go 10 here. Please don't be all 2Ks. Nice. Let's go, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Diving into the last game of the day. Come at you guys with King playing into another variation of King here on the channel. Hopefully you guys are ready for this one. I'm actually having very, 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 very much fun playing this leader. This has quickly turned into my favorite leader in One Piece. He's, he's right up there with Yamato and Pudding. So, the big three. But overall... We're going to dive into this game, see what we can cook up here. I'm not going to doubt it that his build is probably going to be the uh, 10 drop Linlin. -Lin. Because I see a lot of kings trying to utilize that, which, you know, it's not bad. It's a pretty, pretty okay card. I just feel like it's a little bit too slow in today's metagame, but we'll see. You have the usual, usual kings that decide to go heavy into ramp to get to the 10 dawn turn to drop it and then have Sabo. So, it's a possibility. Five lead. Interesting. Hmm. Maybe they didn't get Onigashima here. I will counter, though. Page one ulti combo. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, they take that hit. That's fine. No trigger off that, which is pretty good. We're at seven dawn here. We could potentially pop, but we have to go in, use our leader ability early. Hmm. I don't think that would hurt us too much. 
Yeah, let's go for it. So we don't have a, a lot of suitcase counters to protect ourselves in the following turn, so we do have the zero cost event, but we have the Lin Lin to uh, sustain ourselves as well. And just in case they have like a rush variant. Queen. They get Onigashima Island, which is way, way too late, I think. We take a who's who from that one. I'm assuming five and seven lead. So we have the counter for this. Okay, or six, that's fine. See, now I don't feel so bad. There's a 2k. Now, do I want to give him Kazuma here? I guess we don't really have a choice. Okay, so we know he's got Onigashima Island off the first Queen Search, and the second Queen Search got him a who's who. So we know at least he's got one 2k in hand here. We got the Rebecca. Let's go five into this. This should give us the who's who, maybe. Nope, gives us a Saba. Okay. It's totally okay with me. Eight Dawn. See, doing the minus cost reduction earlier kind of hurt me because I can't play Lin Lin now. But it's okay. We're still healthy. It's fine. We can trash the zero cost event here. And then we can play the one, the one cost searcher. The Kaido is going to be the best option here. Well, it's our, it's not our only option, but it does help out. It's probably going to board wipe me. Oh. Okay. He won't attack because we have Queen. Okay, maybe he will. That's a little weird, but okay. Sure. Alright, so the obvious play would be to Ice Age, drop the Kaido, and pop it. But we minus 6 Dawn in, in the process of doing so. We go back up to 5 with Onigashima here. So we'll go to 7 next turn. I don't think this is going to be the correct way to do this here. I think we have to play Lin Lin instead. And just put the 10 cost in life and heal a life here. We can trash the Jack. Can we get those 2Ks from hand? Black Maria, we'll do the same thing again. Leader ability, draw two, or draw one, sorry. Hmm, so cake isn't gonna help us, obviously. There goes the whole board. I see maybe uh, popping that with Kaido would have been okay. If I knew that he was gonna drop the 10 cost, then we could have ramped up with cake. But, we, know, we didn't know, so. And we don't have a way of removing the 10 cost right now either. Man, that sucks. Hmm. So that's two, two Ice Ages in trash. Hmm. I guess we just play Jack and go 8k to lead, right? Because Kaido's not popping anything. Rebecca's not giving me back any Sabos at this moment in time. What do you do? Okay. Well, there's that who's who. Interesting. Perhaps they have a lot of big bodies in hand that's left over. Alright, that's really good. Okay. We should be fine. Head in trash. Okay. This I don't mind. Rebecca. Yep. Big Mom. Alright, so I can deal with this as well. We're able to put the page one on bottom of life with Lin, Lin here. And then do the minus reduction with our leader ability to get rid of the ulti with Jack. Or we can just run Jack into Kaido and then lose the following turn. I think we have to play Big Mom just to sustain ourselves here. Let's see here real quick. Okay. Yeah. Let's do this instead. Well, bottom life, the page one. Okay. Well, minus two with leader ability. Reduce the ulti. 
and do the jack thing. And then go six lead. Draw one. Two sounds pretty viable here. We can get rid of cake. Ramp up. I'm guessing it doesn't have any counter. Yep. So you got rid of the who's who with the zero cost event. So that was a little interesting. 12, sure. Nice. Can we get a 2k? Yes, we can. There's our Ice Age, though. So that does suck. I don't think we're popping the Kaido here anytime soon unless we're dropping multiple series. Alright, let's do this. Five left. So here comes Sabo. Yep. It's either that or Queen. Having the Sabo here is pretty good for him because we had the Kuzan to pop it. Ooh, actually, even if we could pop it, let me play Kuzan there. We don't have enough counter. I don't believe to protect ourselves from like a 9 drop Kaido if we had a rush unit. Well, no, no, we were fine, because he only goes 6k and then uh, 9k with Kaido, so I think we were chilling. And we're at 2 life, now with the Lin Lin, so, super safe. So 6 lead, again, no counter, right? Nice. These should be free. And then next turn we should be able to get the W. Do leader skill. Okay. You know what? We could let this go. Potentially we could still win the game. But let's counter out here. This way he's forced to play down blockers. Otherwise he loses. Got Linlin of his own. Okay. Well, you can't put anything to life, but he can't heal up. He gets rid of a Sabo. So it goes to two. No blockers up. I can take this hit. That's fine. And I think this should be game for us for next turn. There's no way he's got enough counter for all this. Mm -hmm. What's the point of minus and dawn? You can't draw a card. Alright. There's our Sabos. Okay. So now we have to math. We don't really need to attach this, actually. Let's go nine first. Let's see what he wants to do. Okay. I guess we really don't have to stack all the dots. We can just start swinging. At this point. We're going to play it low safe, okay? Just a little bit safe. Wow. Uh, GG, man. He did have another Kaido too. Crazy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to the end of today's video. I do hope you guys enjoyed this one. This was a lot of fun for me, especially being King and OP08 is one of my favorite leaders to play thus far. Being right up there with Yamato, Pudding, and now it's King. I have no other deck in today's format in which I very much enjoy playing. Now, of course, Birdcage, Bill Flamingo, we're all hoping OP10 gives him some more support. And if he does, he'll be a menace, and then we'll be back on that again. But currently, there's going to be my top three favorite decks. I do hope you guys enjoyed this one. King in particular, I try to utilize Black Maria here in this build setup, where a lot of people think M Maria is just suited for King. She's very good in Raju. She's very good in Mono Purple Kaido. In King, she has her, her niche feelings. So I try to utilize her a little bit, because I know there's people out there that are going to very much want to play with this card, and that's fine. So you got to include yourself your 9-drop Kaido, either your 10-drop Kaido or the new 10-drop Linlin, or Linlin Kaido, you know what I'm talking about. Now, if you notice, there's a lot of Black Yellow Luffy players at locals and regionals at, you know, today's format. You're going to need to be running the 9-cost Linlin if you guys want to have any chance in that matchup, just because it allows you to sustain yourself and put cards back on Luffy's life. Therefore, he has a harder time of getting back to zero to do his leader skill. So, in these particular builds that I showed you guys today, we are not going to be using the one-cost queen. We're going to be strictly focusing around the one-cost event. This allows you to make sure you can draw into your queens and draw into your nine-cost Linlins, which helps you out in a lot of matchups in today's format. Not only Black Yale Luffy, but this is really strong into Pudding as well, considering she's going to be burning her life with Big Moms. But being able to sustain yourself and have big bodies on board 
while popping 10 cost mom with Kuzan with an Ice Age or with an Ice Age and, and a Kaido is pretty strong. I'm going to show you guys the other, the other iteration of today's video as well before we dive into one more list today. Now, again, we played with two different variations today. This one here, and I played with this one as well, which you go down one pudding and one Ice Age to add in two cakes. A lot of people have mixed feelings about this card as well. I think this is really, really good. It allows you to ramp two Dawn instead of one, and you can put them back as active, which is pretty strong. And your opponent just has to have one card on board that's 6,000 power or more. That's it. You really only need to play this once per game to be able to get ahead of your opponent with ramp or catch up with your opponent, depending on if you went first or not. It's a very, very good card. But overall, these have been the two builds for today's video. And I'm going to show you guys one more iteration of this deck profile. And you can pick and choose your favorite. This is another one in which we're going to try utilizing with Who's Who, Suru as well just so we can have more interactions with the Kaido and Black Maria if possible. Kaido, you're dropping Ice Age, you're killing pretty much everything in the game on top of this. The same thing with Suru. You play a Suru down, minus two something, so you're killing a, an A cost, which is really, really nice. But overall, these have been the builds for today. I do hope you guys enjoyed this one. I have a couple more King videos I want to do. That is going to be coming up relatively soon. I'm going to dive into Carrot next. And then we might jump into another King build. I have not decided. But in any case. Remember to smash the like button. Make sure you get these videos floating around. I appreciate everybody. If you ain't following. Hit that follow button. We're growing here. We're doing great. Community is growing as well. But hey. I will catch you guys in the very next one. And or at Locals. Stay safe out there. I'll see y'all later.